Hey guys, this is question MM086 from the Maths Methods Sharp and Study Guide. Consider the simultaneous linear equations ax take 5y equals 10 and 3x take bracket a take 2y equals 6, where a is a real constant. Find the value of a for which there are infinitely many solutions. So, this is a two mark question. So, we have to show some working. And the way that we do that is the following. So, we want to find the values of a for which there are infinitely many solutions, which means that there are infinitely many points of intersection. Um, which means that these two graphs would be exactly the same. They would have the same equation, which means that m1 equals m2 and c1 equals c2. But the only way that we can work this out is if they're in the same format of y equals m plus c. So... We've got y, oh, so our first equation is ax take 5y equals 10. And we want to get that in the form y equals mx plus c. So we have negative 5y equals negative ax plus 10, uh, which gives y equals a on 5x take away 2. So that's our first equation. Uh, our second equation uh, is 3x take a take 2y equals 6, uh, which gives us negative a take 2y equals negative 3x plus 6, uh, which then gives us 3 over a take 2x plus 6 over negative a take 2. So uh, that's our second equation. And what we want to do from here is actually equate our gradients. So this is our first gradient, this is our second gradient, and we know that if they have infinitely many solutions, then they have to be the same graph, which means they have to have the same gradient. So we simply equate these gradients, a over five equals three over a take two. We then multiply this out and get a times a take two, and three times five. So what happens is we get a squared minus 2a uh, minus 15 equals 0. I've skipped a step there, but I'm sure you can see what I've done. Uh, which then equals a take 5a plus 3 equals 0. Uh, which means that a equals 5 and a equals negative 3. So now, because we want infinitely many solutions, we need to check for what value of a does c1 equals c2. So... Uh, we know that our first C value is negative 2. So that means that if we input an A value into here and it comes out as negative 2, they're the same, which means they have infinitely many point of, points of solution, at, sorry, points of intersection, and that's our correct answer. So we need to basically test if this equals negative 2. So uh, we have, so when A equals 5, let's say, we have 6 over negative 5 take 2. Uh, which equals 6 over negative 3, which equals negative 2, uh, which means that c1 equals c2. So that means that when we have a equals 5, we have infinitely points of infinitely many solutions. Uh, but we still need to test if a equals negative 3 would work as well. Uh, my hunch is that it won't, but we still need to test it. So again, 6 over negative a take 2 equals 6 over negative negative 3 take 2, which equals 6 over positive 5, uh, which means that 6 over positive 5 does not equal negative 2, therefore C1 does not equal C2, which means that our final answer is this, and I would literally write this. When A equals 5, there are infinitely many solutions. I would literally write that and then square it out off in red pen. That means that when an examiner is going through your exam, they can see that and go, yep, this guy knows what he's doing. This girl knows what she's doing. That's the right answer. So I would actually write that um, and that would get you two marks. So your first mark is here and your second mark is here. So on to question B. We're trying to find the values of A for which there is a unique solution and it's only one mark worth. So 
uh, what we do from here is we know that when uh, a equals five and a equals negative three, the two gradients equal each other. But when we want a unique solution, what that means is we want one point of intersection and one point of intersection only occurs when the gradients are different. So that means that whenever a is anything but five and negative three, there's a unique solution, which means that our answer is unique solution. And this is, exa this is exactly what I would write. Unique solution when a is an element of r, not including negative three or five. Because we know that when it's equal to five or negative three, the gradients are the same. But for a unique solution, we want them to be different, which means a can be anything but these two things, which is given by this answer here, giving us our one mark.